This episode's FTR shoutout goes to Kaylona Clark. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shoutout in the next episode. Make sure you're subscribed. Are you tired of always drinking boring, normal tap water? You know what they say, boring water, boring life. Well, not anymore. With your new beta filter, you are going to be living an exciting life again. And you know we can't do this all day, so call now and we'll include a second one for free to make sure you get your salmonella. Hey guys, welcome back to Fish for Thought. My name is Chris, your host for this channel. Today we're doing another fish tank review. But before we get started, I would like to bring your attention to my Patreon account. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. A couple dollars from you can mean a world of difference for me and will help push out way more content. Becoming one of my patrons means you also get early access to my videos, which means you can comment first, you can watch it first, all that good stuff. Thanks again, and also thank you guys very much for your submissions. I really did not miss any of you yet, but just hold on tight because there's a lot to cycle through. I'm catching up. Let's go. Teaching the next generation. Oh my goodness, please don't tell me this is an art class project in elementary school. Oh, what are you doing? Do you study ecosystems? Yeah, I promise I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I actually have a bachelor's in ecological restoration and there's massive issues with anyone trying to call those ecosystems or representation, good representations of ecosystems. Ugh, frustrating. Zero out of five. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> okay. Who in their right mind would think that amount of water will be enough for this turtle when it's not basking? And when it is basking, I don't even see a UVB light. They are basking turtles and they need to bask properly in UVB. That's how they're able to digest and incorporate calcium into their bodies. I don't even keep turtles and I know this. But yeah, zero out of five. Let's, let's keep going. What my poor fish had to endure before I educated myself. Yeah, a really small tank and then a sculpture of a really creepy bald female lady with like a piece of poop on her shoulder. But you know what? I'm proud of you for doing what 100% of those other small tank beta people have. You overcame that, you educated yourself, and now your beta is doing much better. So congratulations. Whatever tank you have now, you know, probably way better than a zero out of five. Hey guys, I found another version of that tank from two episodes ago. This time it's even fancier. The freaking filter is a faucet and you can even see the time. And of course we got our ghost fish all over this tank as well. I think we got more ghost fish. It's probably the fish from fish tanks past. Now the last time I made it very clear when I showed it that if it was significantly bigger, like five gallons bigger, it would be able to hold a beta because beta can live in five plus gallons. And then a few of my more challenged viewers, a very small minority. Uh, wait, what are you saying, Chris? Are you saying that you could put goldfish in this tiny tank? I don't think so, pal. Dislike. Zero out of five for this tank. Let's go. Moving on to our subscriber submitted tanks. First of all, let's get this out of the way. Wendy sent this tank. It's her brother's tank and she wanted me to make sure that her brother knows what he's doing here is wrong. Now that little container is for at most transport of the fish or more commonly for a cricket container or some other insect container. These goldfish will get super big. I think these are single tail goldfish which means they need even more space. So Wendy's brother if you're watching please please know that this is not the right way to do things. Trust me it's much more fun if you do it the right way. This tank is from Azize1. Now in the email he said that he did not like the decor that I came with, it was artificial, and then he fixed it up. Now I really like how he fixed it up. There are live plants in between the rocks, and there are more plants in the background. The tank is very understocked. I think there's a little pleco over there that might grow bigger, but it looks like an albino dwarf species. There's a few live bearers here and there, but for the most part, it's perfectly stocked for a tank this size. It's got live plants, good lighting, all the fixins of a great tank, good job for improving this tank. 3.5 out of 5 for the design. Awesome tank here by Richard Higgins. Thanks for sending this tank over. We got some really nice plans here and there. The hydrocaudal in the foreground that's gonna keep rising up to the surface. He's probably gonna trim it back. The substrate looks really pretty and nutritious. The stones are perfectly placed, um, showcasing the best sides of it and creating more depth to the tank. Also like the short-tailed beta, very great tank. 4.5 out of 5. Good job. Now this is a video sent to me by by TB Aquatics. A pretty big tank for the amount of stocking there is. I think it's quite perfectly maxed out for the stocking if you want a lower maintenance tank. The fish all look very healthy. There's a bit of live plants, but there's definitely fake decor in here, which is not that big of an issue. Design-wise, it's knocking the score down a little bit, but you got the air stone, you got filter heaters, everything is perfectly fine. 
3.75 out of 5. Great job. Now this is Tucker MC's tank. Thanks for sending this in. It's really nice scape. Now in the email it said that this is his second tank. I see that your sword there is about to flower. You got some java fern. Careful that you don't bury the rhizomes into the substrate. They can root themselves. If you don't let them root themselves, they might start rotting. Yeah, this is a great scape for a second scape. Like my second tank, I was not even close. I really like the path that you made with the little flat slates. Now I encourage you to check out more aquascapes and try to learn more of the techniques that are used in the trade. It's also a very good idea to try to fill out the back of your tank as well. Four out of five, great job. Now guess who's getting our five out of five for this? episode. It's Vera Van Den Hendy. Sorry, that was probably a 0 out of 5 pronunciation of your name. The discus are huge and they're healthy, vibrant colors. This definitely has a lot of maintenance, but you know what? This bullfront is so beautiful. It's perfectly maintained. The plants are lush. They're amazingly grown in. There's a whole variety of them. The texture is great. I see a log piece in the back that really ties everything together. It's always great to see a natural scape for a discus tank. And Vera, if you're watching, if if you don't mind, can you send me a video or link a video that you have up on YouTube of this tank? I would like to see it. Not gonna guarantee I would include it in a fish tank review, but you know, just for my own viewing pleasure. Thanks. That wraps up this episode of Fish Tank Review. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button and subscribe. Hi, I'm Cool Tomo 9. This is my 90 gallon tank, Tiger Barbs. We're gonna be taking out the goldfish and the Siamese alligator, so it's gonna be a species tank. So, quick game. Don't forget to get your hands wet.